what I did, I used to get these offers for these balanced transfers. Once you did one of them in the, in the, the mail every, uh, every day. Oh, yeah, right. Well, I couldn't apply for uh, one every day. It would start to ding my credit. So I had this idea that I would just save them up and apply for these credit cards all in one night. Hmm, that's uh, that way they would, they wouldn't, they'd all pull the credit at the same time and it would still be high. And uh, so I get approved for these credit cards, uh, like 10,000 a piece. Maybe let's say it was eight to 10 credit cards. Wow. And I, I, I got all these balances on these 0% cards for two years or whatever it was. Sometimes they were even longer than two years, three years. And I shipped all these balances to one credit card, eighty hundred thousand wow. dollars And I used that as no one, first of all, no wonder you're not allowed to do this shit anymore. It's, it's yeah. Because yeah. Somebody yeah, you, gamed the system. You ruined it for everyone. Thanks. <laughs> What is up? And welcome back to another episode of How to Invest in Commercial Real Estate. What's going on? Brady? Today is a super cool episode. I'm super excited. Um, the show's is called it? How to Invest in Commercial Real Estate. And I thought today we would break down how you actually invest in commercial real estate. And the, the first part is how to get started. So how do you start getting invested in commercial real estate? First, the biggest question most people ask themselves. Where's the money going to come from? Where's the money going to come from? Yeah. You literally read my mind. It's beautiful. Where's the money going to come from? How do people get money aside from the government just depositing it in your account randomly? I got to think there's a lot of people who'd love to do this. And, you know, they hear about no money down. I hear about no money down and that turns me off. I don't, I don't yeah. want to do that. I, so I think there's a lot of people who just feel like they don't have the money to get started. So Joel, well, okay. When you so got we're, started. we're talking, I mean, there's n me now today, if you ask me, where does the money come from commercial real estate? My answer would be different. Yeah. Right. But if you're asking me how I got started, how my business partner yeah. and I got started, uh, hopefully the, the stories will help you think outside the box because, uh, you know, if you keep telling yourself, uh, I, I can't afford it, I don't have the money, then that's the answer you'll get. So you start, you need to reframe the question and say, how do I find it? You know, yeah, how do right. I afford it? Mm -hmm. And then your brain goes to work to think of ways that you can come up with money. Yeah. Not that I can't afford it. How do I afford and, it? And How can I, I do it? When I started it, we didn't have any money. So I leaned on the authors that I was reading to inspire me to be thinking outside the box for opportunities. Well, hold on right there, because I feel like some people even get started when they, when they have money. So let's, let's talk about money. And I feel like for most people, they have this stream of money, but all of it's allocated, all of it's being spent. None of it is set aside for Nothing the, left over. for the dream for the, Hey, I want to go invest in real estate or, Hey, we're going to retire one day and travel the world or, you know, whatever it is. And I think it's, I think it's hard, even for somebody making a ton of money, they could be spending a ton more money than they're making. And it's just hard to get that chunk. You know, you need kind of a big chunk to get started. Yeah. I mean, that's maybe another episode. Cause I think about, you know, wanting to help people with their budget. Uh, everybody that's listening to this podcast is probably spending more than they should be. Mm -hmm. You could, you could be living on less and saving that money up. Uh, every dollar that you're spending today if you'd invest it is worth thousands of dollars in the future. And if you kind of convince yourself of that, you'd be, you'd be more uh, focused on reducing your, your expenses today to get that sum of money. Yeah. Natural yep. tendency is if you make more income, oh, okay, well I can afford a nicer car. I can afford a nicer house, but you still don't have that chunk. Like you're talking about. To I mean, invest. forget nice cars and nice houses. Let's talk about necessities. Like I need health insurance. It's a thousand dollars a month if you're a family. Most people, you know, can't afford that or they have to get it through a job or they have to get subpar. I mean, just getting like necessities, you going on one vacation a year, like, Hey, I'm going to take my family on vacation. That's, you know, five, 10 grand. And I mean, it just, well, it so, adds up. Yeah. Most incomes, they are, they're not going to save their way to the money they need. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but, but, it, but for me, when I started, uh, I was looking for, uh, opportunities to generate, uh, some money. And uh, my business partner and I, we had hooked up and he had actually had some cash saved that was actually credit card debt. And he was waiting for that right investment. And we found these, these two houses and uh, man, they were cheap back in the day. They were kind of run down in a tough area. Uh, but we knew that How much were they back uh, then? Yeah, the 17 and a half thousand a piece. Ooh, wow. For we houses. Kidding. Yeah, they were, like they were pretty rough. But what we knew is that if we could fix them up, that we could put uh, a assisted housing tenant in there mm. and the government would pay us 700 bucks a month or oh, whatever. Okay. Interesting. Okay. And, and so uh, they needed some work and this, this person just kind of wanted to liquidate them. So we, we buy these houses uh, with essentially with credit card debt and we pay $35,000 for two houses. Wow. Now the key uh, takeaway is when we go to put debt on them, we own them free and clear. Now, if we were going to go put debt on those when we were purchasing them, 
you can get an 80% LTV loan to value a mortgage on those. So you just bought these houses in cash? In cash. And you were, did the remodel in cash? Uh, yeah, the remodel wasn't wasn't much. Cash um, that you had, or you used it wasn't sort of, much on the seventeen thousand dollar house. Yeah, it was a few thousand. If you and that sounds paint, like we well, we did the we we painted them ourselves. We were up there and uh, you know painting them, and and they needed some carpet, so it wasn't much money mm -hmm. to fix these up. Yeah, people can do that now. But the, the takeaway is, if you get an eighty percent loan on on thirty five thousand, uh, you know what is that twenty eight grand? Mm -hmm. And so we'd get twenty eight of our of our, our thirty five thousand back. But what we found, which was really important, is that when you own something uh, free and clear, all cash, that the, the appraisal is subject to, to be different than the purchase price. When you're buying it, they're gonna appraise the, the property at what you buy it for. Yeah. Yeah, so let's pause right there because let's just define an appraiser. An appraiser's job is literally to justify the purchase price. That's mm -hmm. it. So normally you get a contract, you sign a contract, buyer and seller, hey, I'm gonna buy this piece of property for, in this case, $17,000. And the appraiser goes out there and his only job is to take the contract and it says, hey, is this worth the $17,000 that this guy's willing to pay? Because market is what buyers willing to pay and what sellers willing to sell for. So, so that's it. That's what he's talking about. Now, sometimes they may say it's not worth that. but So on a re, on, on, you know, when you're refinancing something or when you own something free and clear and you're going to put debt on it, they don't have any purchase price. They're just going out there and they're looking at the loan value. Mm -hmm. well, so they're, looking they're, at, trying, they're looking at comps. Uh, but also they're looking at what we think it's worth. You can influence the value when you go to refinance much mm -hmm. more uh, than you can if you're going to uh, buy it because that purchase price, that purchase and sale contract really dictates the value. Mm -hmm. It yeah. tells the appraiser that's what a buyer is willing to pay and a seller is willing to sell at. Uh, so the magic of, of buying cash, even though they were cheap, is that we had an opportunity to get a higher appraisal. Uh, say, hey, we fixed this right. up. Hey, we have a renter in there paying $700 a month. Well, Hey, that, that makes it worth a lot more yeah, than right. what we paid for. We're just getting a renter in there versus a vacant house. Right, mm -hmm. right. And so we got a, a, a person out of California. He had moved here. He was, you know, you know thinking these houses no are smart. all really cheap. <laughs> and so we got each of them appraised for $50,000 because wow. once again, they are rented for $700 a piece. So, okay. so we bought for $35,000. We, we had an appraisal of $100,000. Mm -hmm. And so now we got a loan for $80,000. Wow. And you know, the, the payment on an $80,000 mortgage is what, 600 bucks, mm -hmm. right? And so we were renting them each for 700 or 750. Wow. And so the mortgage is- oh, So you ca cash out 50K so, and you were still cash yeah, flowing so you, the deal. Cash, wow. cash out uh, 45,000 and we were still cash flowing on our rentals. Mm -hmm. And that, a light bulb went off for us and we said, hey, we gotta try to do this again. Mm -hmm. and, and so we went in and found a package of three. This time we paid mm -hmm. you know, 21, 22,000 a piece for the houses. Mm -hmm. But we did the same thing. We got even a higher appraisal that time, and and so through that process, we were able to generate pretty quickly, uh, you know, hundred thousand or so in just cash, and we didn't spend it. We 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 had that, and we invested in our first small apartment complex with that hundred thousand. So the first deal let you buy these three three houses. The first two house deal let you buy these three houses, and then the three house deal let you buy an apartment complex. Yeah, and, and think so about it. Just, uh, we've all it. played the game, Monopoly. And, and we did, we did a couple houses, then we jumped to three houses and then, yeah. then small hotel. Then you put a hotel. Oh, uh, what an hotel it was an apartment complex, <laughs> but, uh, that, and that, that's my exam. That's one of my examples. Um, but what I hope it encourages you to do is, is the deal of the decade. Like we've talked about is out there. It comes along once a week, but I was reading books and I, I was out looking at property all day and calling on sellers. So I was in the market for those deals. And if you think that you can't afford it or, or you're not gonna be able to get the money or you don't have any money, well then you're, you're never gonna find it. You have to right. be looking, you have to be active. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, another example that comes to mind, just I don't recommend anyone doing this, but it just shows about how to think outside the box and be creative is back in the early 2000s, you know, they were giving these balance transfers on credit cards at 0% interest for free. The, the transfer would be free. Today, you gotta pay 3% of the transaction volume or, mm -hmm. or whatever. So what they were encouraging you to do is take out this 0% this interest for 12 months or 24 months uh, balance and then transfer it to the credit card that you owe a balance on at 15%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I came across it just by chance is I got one of those and I, trans I said, hey, what's my limit? You know, and they said $10,000 or whatever. And I said, okay, hey, let's transfer this to this card. The only, only problem was the car didn't have a balance. And so 
Uh, I didn't know what would happen, but I, I shipped it over to this card. It's zero percent on the new card. So essentially, you've got like a ten thousand dollar credit on this. I have a ten thousand yeah. dollar credit on a credit card, mm. and so I called the credit card and I said, "Hey, I've got this ten thousand dollar credit. I think initially I was just going to spend use that card uh, yeah. for, for whatever expenses and, and I had, on yeah. and then and then just have the balance over here." Yeah, yeah. But they said, "Hey, no, we'll ship that. We'll, we'll send you a check." I'm like, "You, you will? You'll send me a check?" So I got a check for ten thousand, and I have a balance on a credit card at zero percent for like two years, and so. We had an opportunity to, to buy uh, our first, what would be profitable apartment complex. And uh, we didn't have the money, but one day I sat down and I just wrote down every way I was gonna get money. And I was gonna my father-in-law, my father, maybe take a loan on my 401k, mm -hmm. all that my savings had, my business partner, his savings. Just hit up circles. Kind of see how much And I get. couldn't get there. We couldn't get enough money. I yep. think we, we needed you know several hundred thousand dollars and so I had this idea. So we went from buying two seventeen thousand dollars houses real quick. So like we're buying the first apartment complex and you need several hundred thousand dollars. Well, this was not the first apartment complex. This was you know about a year or two down the road where I'd found this. It was too big for us at the time, but I just knew that it was a good deal. Mm -hmm. And so what I did, I used to get these offers for these balanced transfers. Once you did one of them in the, in the, the mail every uh, every day. Oh, yeah, right. Well, I couldn't apply for uh, one every day. It would start to ding my credit. So I had this idea that I would just save them up and apply for these credit cards all in one night. Hmm, that's uh, that way they would, they wouldn't, they'd all pull the credit at the same time and it would still be high. And uh, so I get approved for these credit cards, uh, like 10,000 a piece. Maybe let's say it was eight to 10 credit cards. Wow. And I, I, I got all these balances on these 0% cards for two years or whatever it was. Sometimes they were even longer than two years, three years. And I shipped all these balances to one credit card, $80,000. And I use that as no one. First of all, no wonder you're not allowed to do this shit anymore. It's, it's yeah. because yeah. somebody you, game the system. You ruined it for everyone. Thanks. <laughs> and so you know, just just trying to encourage you that, that things are possible when you're thinking creatively. Is So I got the rest of the down payment uh, combined with my business partner's money and all that we had. And we were able to close on this apartment complex. We had no business buying. Yeah. And now the flip side is I had a stack of credit cards that I carried around with me for two or three years making those minimum payments. Oh yeah. Right. But it was zero percent. So I didn't feel yeah, wasn't uh, that much probably. Didn't feel too bad about it. Yeah, plus the investment was making more than zero percent, obviously. Yeah. So I don't necessarily recommend that strategy. Uh, you know, my journey, my business partner's journey uh, is unique in that we just didn't have any mentorship and we didn't have any money. Uh, but, uh, what I'll say is I've heard of other people doing crazier stuff than that. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Way so crazier. there, there's an avenue for you to, to find, uh, the capital you need. Um, maybe it's a partner, you know, like we've talked about, that's probably number one go to, but, but be creative, be thinking about, Hey, how do I make this work? It's not, I can't afford it. It's how can I afford yeah. it? Yeah. And yeah. that one change, get your subconscious going to try to find the solution you need to whatever the problem is that you have in front of you. Yeah. And That's just cool. an That's interesting awesome. dichotomy there is, is, you know, when you have money, when people who have money, they, they typically lack time and opportunities and they don't lack time. It's they, they choose to invest their time with their family or whatever they enjoy doing. And they just don't have the time necessarily to go find all these amazing opportunities for their money. So when you find an opportunity, that's typically the harder part than finding the money because yeah, if you can, it's like Facebook advertising. Like if you can get a, your ad in front of enough people, typically it will convert. It's getting the ad in front of the people. It's letting people you know, know you have this opportunity. So, I mean, getting the opportunity, getting the thing locked up is, is one of the big things for me because people think they have to go, you know, let's say you want to buy an apartment complex or any commercial deal. People think you just have to go, oh, I need money. So they go out, they, they start talking to their friends and they're like, hey, I want to raise money for commercial real estate. Hey, I want to do this deal. Hey, I need money. You know, I want to raise $300,000 and they have nothing. They have the promise of investing in commercial real estate and they're like, hey, I want to talk to you about something. I was thinking, you know, me, you, five other guys, we're going to put together 300 grand and we're going to go invest in commercial real estate. If you brought that to somebody, they'd say no. Because they'd be like, what do you mean we want to go invest in commercial real estate? Who's doing it? What deals are we going to buy? Where, where are we going to do it? When are we getting our money back? Who's signing the debt? But if you take this nice little package with a bow on it and everything, and it's this perfectly gorgeous deal with a lender inside and a seller wanting to sell and this nice property, and you take it to them with a performer and a package, and you're like, hey, raising 300000 me and a few guys, we're putting this deal together with this property, you're gonna get money back at this time. You, you know, here's everything, you break it down, you give them a specific deal, 
right? It's super easy to get them to invest in that. It's, it's super easy and you can, you can get started. I mean, you may yeah. get some no's, but uh, Brian, I mean, I remember when I first pitched you the deal, you had never invested in commercial real estate. Yeah, that's right. And what, uh, I know we've probably talked about this before, but what was it about that simple pro forma and presentation that I, that I gave you that you thought it was safe enough? Well, it, it wasn't about the promise of, hey, do you want to invest in commercial real estate? Hey, Brian, do you want to invest yeah. in commercial real estate? No, you said, hey, Brian, do you want to invest in this deal? With this return. Yeah. But anyway, I want to hear yeah, it. What yeah, so it, so it was the it was the returns that uh, I felt like were better than what I was getting at the present time in, in other investments. It was, uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you, it was your experience and, and hearing some of these stories, just like you told tonight, um, hearing some of those stories and, and uh, felt like you would do whatever it took to get the deal done, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then the deal, just the way you presented it, it made sense. I mean, you just laid it out, kind of like we've talked about on, on other shows on how you know, how the whole deals work and, and how to lay them out. So it I was think just I remember, a combination of those uh, things. going through like a best case and a worst case. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of gave you a range of the returns. Even the worst case, uh, which, which, um, was, you know, everything going wrong still, still seemed attractive. So, um, but just laying it out like that, like you said, best case and worst case and, and, um, the returns being better than I could get in other investments, your confidence, your experience. Um, those are the things that, that sold me on that first deal. Anything else that we should we should mention about thinking outside the box? Yeah, I, I want to know. I remember we talking about the story when you um, bought what, what was the name of the engineering company? Calidus. Calidus. Yeah. yeah. So you guys did the takeover of Calidus and, and that obviously had to cost money. You know, there's a group of you guys doing it. It was an opportunity that you got presented. But, you know, what what was the amount of money I guess you had to raise and where did you get it? I well, mean, it had to have been a decent sum and it had to have seemed big, I would think. Yeah. Well, actually, you know, talk about thinking outside the box. We had to do some, we had to be pretty creative on that because we had, um, actually we had an owner carry. Um, so the, the, uh, owner that, that owned the company at the present time carried some of the, of the loan and we paid them back. Then we had a bank, a local bank in Tulsa loan us some money. So we had to pay them back. Oh my gosh. Um, then we put our own money, uh, forward and we actually asked the current owner, Hey, if we just forego our bonuses, can that be also an additional amount? I mean, it, it's not unlike what you're saying. Yeah. It was definitely, yeah. it was a huge amount of money for us. Cause we, I mean, we didn't, we didn't really have any money yeah. um, for us to, to all these partners to, to, you know, outlay a whole bunch of money. So we had to, we had to get it from, from different places, just like anybody who might be buying one of these real estates or selling one of these real estate. The seller deals, so. carry is interesting because that that's a big way that, uh, real estate investors can get in for yeah, less the same money thing. or no money yeah. His partner in a sense with the, with the seller, with the, have him carry the note at good terms, buys you time and it gets you control of the asset. And if it's a good deal, you can make the asset can make you money and then you'll have plenty of money to pay the seller. Right. I don't know if in real estate, could we, could you do the same thing? Could you do an owner carry and then go to a bank and what you can't get from the owner carry? Can you, Borrow? Maybe not so much. Depends on the lender. But that's what we did. Uh, some lenders don't allow that, um, but there are creative ways to do it um, mm -hmm. where uh, maybe you, you make the, the owner, uh, maybe he's an owner of the, the buying LLC. And so mm -hmm. maybe at closing, he's supposed to get the money, but he gives it right back. Oh, and, yeah. You know, I, I think there's some definitely some creative ways that you could work it out where you could still do it. But some lenders... Uh, they, they forbid an actual second mortgage. Yeah. So, right. okay. Real quick. We're talking about thinking outside the box. I know it's impromptu, but you got to tell the, um, the gap closing story of Stephanie promenade. This is that, this is out of the box for sure. So oh my goodness. we're, we're, we're teed up. You're, you're teed up to close. This is, um, I forget the purchase price, 12, 12 million, I, I think dollar deal. So, you know, hundred thousand square foot of retail, decent sized deal in Nevada, got it in contract. You're working on it forever. You've got really good bank debt teed up and, 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 you know, you're approaching closing and, uh, what you have, you have two different lenders. You have a first. Yeah. It's interesting. So I'll just be as quick as I can and we'll wrap it up. But it, it was out of the box thinking because we had a, had a first mortgage. Um, uh, but they, uh, said that we can't have a second mortgage, but the whole deal had been predicated on us getting a second mortgage. Hmm. Uh, right, because the first was for like 50%. Or yeah, something. the first was terrible based on previous cash flow. It was only 50%. So I needed 30% of the down payment and I was going to bring 20%. 
So that in this case, it was a big number. It was $6 million. Which is dumb. Nobody gets a 30 you know, percent second, just yeah. by the way. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's not typical. But in this case, we, they had promised that they were going to give it to us. But uh, the the first uh, the first lender, the first mortgage holder, they said, hey, you can't do a simultaneous second. We don't want a second on our closing. Well, then the second bank said, well, we're not going to be un, un, unsecured. We, we're, so real quick, we're, we're dangering in uncharted territory. So a first real estate mortgage is they go and they, they file their mortgage first. And it means, hey, if something happens to this property, we've got the first rights of recourse. If this guy defaults, we get paid got back the first. first right. We get paid back. We're going to fire sell this asset. We're going to get paid first, and whatever's left over can go to a second mortgage. Yeah. Right. But in this case, they didn't want to put that uh, a second on their asset. We couldn't close. Right. But you know, they kind of said, "Hey, what you do after the closing is your business." Hmm. And so I needed a way to get that second on, but I needed the money to buy the property. Yeah. Right. And that was the problem. And I tried to convince the second mortgage holder that they could, they could uh, put the money in escrow and then file their second later. They weren't going to do it. Yeah. And so we had to be really creative and we went out and we got uh, basically a $6 million mez debt piece hmm. for a day. And so what they do is it's not a, a technically a mortgage. They, they give you the money and if you default, they, they take over the owning LLC. Wow. So it's not a mortgage. They're not, they're not uh, securing it by the property. They're securing mm. it by the owning LLC, which I own. They would take that. Mm. Wow. Uh, and it's really expensive to do, but I got that, uh, mes debt piece for, uh, two days. We, <laughs> we, we bought the property and then had time for the second mortgage holder to come in and place that second on, uh, very complicated structure, but yeah. once again, if if you have a deal you know is good, you're going to do anything yeah. it takes to get it to get it closed. Yeah, right. Yeah, but general timeline, you had what? Uh, I mean, seven, fourteen, thirty days to find six million dollars to borrow for forty eight hours, so then you could pay it off and get another six million dollars for you know five years. Right. I mean, it was it was super short timeline. Oh and, yeah, it was really tough. And and just that the uh, the fees I paid for that six million dollars to someone to take that risk and do that last minute was like two hundred thousand dollars. Wow. So here's the point I'm driving to: when you see an opportunity, when you see that commercial real estate deal, and you identify with it, you're just like, "Hey, that's mine. I own it. That's the deal that I'm going to make it happen. This is the one. No I'm telling what. you, this is it." When you identify with it and you just walk into it like it's already yours, you you have to find a way to get it done. You, you can't live without a way of getting it done. And it, and it drives and motivates and fuels. And it, it's got to be a good deal. I'm not saying you just like push no matter what. I'm just saying. Well, we've talked about it, though, that um, every time we've had a life changing deal, it's been that way. It's it's provided challenges. Yep. And I and I had to believe that there was there was big profit there. But then I also had to to, to take big risk and bet it all to, to, to make that happen. I, I've said before, Life demands that you pay upfront and in full, and it'll always call you to give more than you want to get that really good deal. But anyway, I love it, man. Right. Yeah, this is a great episode. Anyway, I feel good about it. Make sure to like and subscribe. Check us out on the interwe how internet, interweb. I try to say both those things at the same time. Anyway, how to invest in CRE TV. Think outside Check the us box. Out. Yeah. Think outside the box. Anyway, we'll see you soon. Next right. time.